Here we have the Atkinson cycle engine, this being the second engine of this uh, type or of this theme that Mr. Atkinson developed. This was developed in about the year 1886. If you watched the other video clip on the other engine, the Atkinson differential engine, then you have seen Atkinson's first attempt at competing with the Nicholas Otto four-stroke engine of the era. Now Nicholas Otto had patents on his engine and he fiercely guarded those. So anyone coming up with new designs, so to speak, would have to be, do so in a much different way than the Otto engine. And so that's the reason for Atkinson's attempts here to be so much different. And he really succeeded. As this engine, just like the differential engine, is able to complete all four strokes in a single revolution of the crank. And this, this engine does not have a separate camshaft or separate timing gears in order to make this possible. It does it all the cams are located on the actual crankshaft itself. This is very unique. All, once again, all four strokes in a single revolution of the crank, whereas the auto engine did the same thing, but it took two complete revolutions of the crank. So at this time, we'll go through, we'll zoom up here a little bit with the camera, and we'll go through the strokes. We'll show you the strokes uh, and how this engine operates, and then we'll get it started up, and you'll have an opportunity to see it run. So as we begin, seeing how the uh, Atkinson cycle engine is able to complete all four strokes in a single revolution of the crank, and we begin here at the intake stroke. And so as we begin in the intake stroke, the actual intake valve is this valve located right here on the very bottom. I don't know if you can see this in the camera or not, but as we begin, you'll see that valve open. And as it opens, then see it's beginning to close now as we come around. So we've, we've taken fuel into the cylinder, and now we're going into the compression stroke. And as we begin the compression stroke, see the intake valve has closed. Okay, there we are. Now we're coming around and the explosion is happening right about now. And so here we go into the power stroke. Okay, this is the power stroke here. And now we're coming out to the, as it begins to change now to the exhaust stroke. And so this is the exhaust valve here at the very top. Here's the exhaust valve. And as we come through, once again to the exhaust stroke, and we begin this, this cycle once again. And if you'll notice, here we have the crank in exactly the same position as it was. And we can go through this once again. As we come through, here we have the actual intake stroke. And you can see this valve here, the intake valve, moving just a little bit. There she is, opens and closes. So it's open. We're taking in fuel into the cylinder. Okay, now we're coming up. The intake valve has closed. Both valves are, remain closed as we come into the compression stroke. We're compressing that fuel, and right about at this point right here, we have the power stroke beginning. The points have just made contact, and the, the explosion has occurred, and we come around now, and we're in the actual power stroke. And so as we come around here, we've completed the power stroke. Now you begin to see the exhaust valve. See the exhaust valve here is beginning to open as we exhaust those spent gases, as it were. And once again, here we are all the way, once again, to the beginning, all four strokes in a single revolution of the crank. And there you have it. Now let's see if we get this engine started, and we'll watch it run here for just a minute.